Hello everyone, so this video is going to cover more of the advanced features of the Obsidian Incremental Writing plugin. The plugin is actually quite simple, so none of these features are going to be super advanced or complex, but I'm going to be covering things like uh, customization and having multiple queues, things that uh, not everyone is necessarily going to want. If you're confused and you don't know how you ended up here, you're probably going to want to go and watch that first video because it explains the basic features of the plugin, like adding things to the incremental writing queue, uh, setting the priority, uh, setting the first rep date, and reviewing your repetitions. And if you want a basic introduction to incremental writing, I'll leave a link to my video which explains the concepts behind it in more depth uh, in the description. Okay, so let's just jump straight into things. Okay, so the first thing we can take a look at is the settings page. Here you can see that you have a bunch of options for storing your queues. So for example, you can choose a queue folder, which is the path to the folder where all of the incremental writing queues that you create are going to be stored. You can also set a default queue, which is the first queue that is going to be chosen when you start up the plugin. So there are a number of reasons why I decided to include the ability to have multiple queues. Firstly, it allows you to separate a main queue of repetitions that are very important to you and you intend to repeat over a long period of time, like years, from less important queues, where you might only want to repeat them over a series of weeks or months. Secondly, it allows you to have queues with different scheduling options, which I'll get into later. So let's take a look at how you can create and load different queues. If you take a look at the bottom right of the screen, you can see that uh, the status bar shows you which queue you currently have loaded. So in order to create a new queue, all you need to do is use one of the methods that I talked about in the previous video to add something to a queue and specify which queue you want to add it to. So let me give you an example. If I go over to the concepts folder and click add folder to IWQ, you can see that right at the top, there's this option to specify the queue that I want to add this to. So what I'll do is I'll just type in the name of a new queue. And now if I go to that folder, you can see that a new queue has been created for me and it contains all of those repetitions that I just added. So if I want to load the queue that I just created, I can use the load a queue command. And you can see that I have that new testing queue available to me. So if I click on that, so you should be able to see in the bottom right that the status bar has been updated and the new queue has been loaded. Okay, so that pretty much covers how to create and load different incremental writing queues. But let's go back to why you'd actually want to do this in the first place. So I mentioned earlier that you might want to have separate queues for those repetitions that you want to repeat over a longer period of time, like years, and those repetitions that you only want to repeat over weeks or months. So the method that I've been using so far is to have one main queue, which uses the A factor scheduling. Then I intermittently create and delete these subset queues, which I only want to keep around for uh, a week or so. And for those queues, I tend to use the simple scheduling option. So let's talk about scheduling. A factor scheduling basically refers to scheduling where you have uh, a next repetition date and you have an interval between the last repetition and the next repetition. Each time you hit next repetition, what will happen is the current interval will get multiplied by the A factor to determine the next interval and the next repetition date. The interval between each repetition grows geometrically over time, so I'll see it less and less uh, as time progresses, and I'll have more time in between each repetition to create new ideas, uh, create new creative associations, and so on. You can think of this as a very primitive version of the spaced repetition algorithm that's used to schedule uh, question and answer cards in programs like Anki and Supermemo. Now I'll quickly create a queue with the simple scheduler option and explain what simple scheduling means. So if I go to my incremental writing settings and I change the default scheduler to simple scheduler, and then if I just go back to the concepts folder, add the folder to the IWQ, and if I just pick a new queue, and if I add that to the queue, the simple scheduler is just a basic round robin. Each time you hit next repetition, the current repetition will basically just get moved like this to the end of the queue and the priorities will be updated to set this repetition at the end of the queue. So with a simple scheduler, you'll basically just see your repetitions in a cycle without your repetitions being scheduled into the future or having an interval or anything like that. So let me give you a really brief demonstration of why this is useful to me. So if I just reload my main incremental writing queue, and if I just load the current repetition, 
So when I'm going through my main repetitions, I might realize that this one is uh, coming very close to being finished and sort of publishable. So once I finish the content for the main article, one thing that I want to make sure is that all of the links contained within the article uh, are finished as well. So one of the things I can do is add all of the links within the current article to a new queue. And typically I choose um, a simple queue, which will just show me each of the links contained within this article in a cycle so that I can just keep going through the cycle until all of the uh, links contained within this article uh, are fully fleshed out and ready to be published. So I actually created a special command to do this. So if I click on the add links within notes to queue, I have the option to bulk add all of the links inside the notes to a new queue. And so now you can see that uh, it's generated a new incremental writing queue for me and it's going to be using the simple scheduler. And so I can just keep hitting next repetition until I've finished adding everything I need to to these links. And then I can just delete this uh, simple queue. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. I hope it was useful and let me know if you have any suggestions or ideas that can improve the plugin. Thanks guys.